right, hello, wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday and halfway through the month of February, already up towards a 400 wines tasted here at the Wine Watch. A very busy start to 2016. And our friend Kerry from Duckhorn was in to see us first time this year and uh, showed us some new releases like the 2013 Duckhorn Chardonnay. This is only the second vintage of Chardonnay from this famous Napa Valley producer. These guys known for their Merlot and their Cabernets. And um, this wine's got a lovely ripe tropical fruit here on the nose with nice notes of lightly toasted oak spice and creme flan notes as well. Nice rich and creamy texture on the tongue. A solid core of those ripe tree fruits showing hints of vanilla nutmeg spice. Nice freshness to the finish. Nice hint of minerality and that creme flan at the end. An excellent example of Napa Valley Chardonnay at $39 off to Washington State. That's right, the, the Duckhorn folks have invested in land on Red Mountain. Dick Boucher is the vineyard manager up here, and Brian Rudin is the winemaker. And uh, these guys have planted 18 acres on some of the most expensive dirt in all of the Columbia Valley. Red Mountain, only 4,000 acres. But, you know, they've got to buy fruit for this wine because those vines are still not ready to go. They're right next to Col Solari. This wine is a blend of 9% Merlot, 3% Malbec in the Cabernet. And this wine, I see 16 months in 100% new French oak, and you get a a lot of that red mountain earth here on the nose, a good amount of that dirt that is unique to this terroir, and uh, some nice red and black currant, dark plum, dark cherry fruit, Asian spices, black licorice, and more as this wine opens up. Very complex, the 2013 vintage, showing a lot more fruit than even the 12, I think. The 11 was very cold, but this wine, plump and juicy on the tongue, and uh, a nice freshness. It's one of the hallmarks of the wines from Washington State. You have that high temperatures they get in the daytime, and very, very cold at night, keeping the freshness in the wine. It has a lovely tobacco spice and licorice note through the finish. Uh, really lovely balance in this wine. Excellent juice at $45. Paradox, another winery that these guys own is uh, this has changed their they've changed the things around a little bit they used to do a CS and a ZS blend and now they just do one wine a proprietary red which is which is mostly Cabernet Sauvignon and then Zinfandel with a little petite Verdot and uh, this 2012 vintage showing a lot of that gorgeous forward fruit that this wine has a little smoky note some dark cherry currant berry fruit a hint of black earth espresso bitter chocolate notes there really rich and well endowed on the palate with smooth round tannins nice balance this wine drinks beautifully even at this young age excellent juice at fifty dollars and the duckhorn discussion 2011 we need to have a discussion about the price here at 142 dollars and 50 cents hoo -ah. and uh, the 2011 vintage uh, just not a, a blockbuster vintage from napa this one was first produced in 2006 it's uh, from their seven estate vineyards it's a blend of cabernet merlot cab franc and petit verdot and the blend changes every year and this wine has a little bit of that underripe kind of green winter greeny character to the nose that these 2011s have but it has some nice dark currant dark plum fruit a nice toasty oak spice really fresh and bright style of napa cab drinking already very nicely the tannin soft and round not a blockbuster fine tannins at the end and that the green minty and bitter coat Cocoa note, an excellent bottle of wine, I would say just very pricey. The Duckhorn Late Harvest, um, I don't know if they've ever had their Late Harvest before, but this wine's from the 2012 vintage, it's Sauvignon Blanc, and they, they say there's no Botrytis in it, but they get a lovely honey character here to the nose, and uh, a lot of sweetness there, Grem rich creme brulee, luscious peach kind of character, very pretty bouquet, super sweet on the tongue, um, similar to a Sauternes, but this wine's got lovely acidity, uh, cleaning things up there, that lovely nice creme brulee character coming through on the finish, excellent juice, and that's what we had to drink with our friend Carrie from Duckhorn. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.